Hey guys, Ron here, and I gotta say, I'm an easy person to please. If I learn just one thing that I like about a Pokemon, I try my best to get that sweet information out into the world. And there are a lot of Pokemon who at first glance don't have anything super special about their design. They may look cool, but there are a bunch of Pokemon who have some kind of design trait that is relatively unnoticeable if you weren't already aware of the context. That's what this video is for. Apart from a few exceptions, I'm not going to be talking about overall impressive designs based on an origin that you may have not known about, like I usually do, but rather smart little design choices that were added to the Pokemon to make them more interesting, or represent something that you might have not caught up on. Something that wouldn't make or break the Pokemon. I may have purposely left out a few Pokemon that I've talked about a bunch of times already, like how Remoraid and Octillery resemble a gun and a tank, especially in their beta forms. Another example of a Pokemon not on this list is Donphan, because while I think the design is genius, its tire-like trunk is very noticeable and a part of the entire concept, so most people understand that cool design element. Now there's no better way than starting off with the Pokemon whose DNA is said to contain the genetic code of all Pokemon, Mew. And while Mew's current design is way more cat-like, its original appearance has an uncanny resemblance to an embryo. Considering most animals look very similar to each other in their earliest stages of development, it makes total sense for the Pokemon that can transform into any other Pokemon to resemble such a vague form of life. I mean, guess what animal this is? Or this. This is a bird and this is a fish. Not to mention, the stem cells of an embryo are able to transform into other types of cells. While this Pokemon has become more cat-like over the years, its tail, pink coloring, stance, and ability to float in what resembles an amniotic sac are all tiny nods to its appropriate origin. Since we're on the topic of babies, I think it's a good time to talk about how Cleffa is literally a star. But you already knew that. After all, it's the star-shaped Pokemon. I only mentioned it so I can transition into our next Pokemon, Volcarona. It's another Pokemon that was made to resemble a star, most specifically the one we have in our backyard, the good old sun. But the significance of its six wings often goes unnoticed. It resembles the six fiery wings of the burning angels known as Seraphim, who also didn't have legs. But another star fact you may not know revolves around Ursaring and Teddy Ursa, who are based on the constellations, Ursa Major and Ursa Minor. But we're not talking about origins in this video, but rather small design aspects. While the moon on Teddy Ursa's face is pretty obvious, the ring around Ursa Ring's stomach resembles the pattern that sun bears have, another bear that is named after a celestial body, but those are relatively easy to recognize. How about a Pokemon whose symbol is even harder to notice? Absol's face can also be seen as a Taijutu. The concept of yin and yang or any opposite forces that complement each other are very fitting for a Pokemon who is seen to be both an agent of light and darkness. Keep in mind that Absol isn't based on this symbol, and in this video I'm not going to go super in depth into the actual origins of these Pokemon. Pokemon. For example, Glalie is a floating head based on Onis, but its face also has an awful resemblance to an ice hockey goalie mask. Its name is a combination of Glacier and Goalie after all. Another floating head Pokemon is Castform. This cloud-like cutie also has the shape of a water molecule, which is what clouds are made of. The head represents a big oxygen atom, and Castform's, uh boobs or front butt represents the two smaller hydrogen molecules. But even if you're not a fan of cast form but still want to see some high quality cloud references in your Pokemon, then look no further than the legendary beasts. While Suicune's mane could represent anything from a stream of water to Aurora Borealis, the mane of Raikou is meant to look like a billowing thundercloud, while Entei's is supposed to look like a cloud of smoke erupting from the side of a mountain. The other mountain destroying trio known as the legendary titans have markings on their faces that resemble braille. The dots on the Reggie's faces are a reference to their origin, the golems of Hebrew legend, who had the Hebrew word for truth written on them in order to activate the golems. So these menacing dots are nice touch. Good job, Game Freak. It kinda seems like you guys are in love with golems, cause Golurk also has a nice little nod to its origin. The patch around its chest looks identical to the ones that the golem of Prague sports. The Poliwhirl family also has significant chests. Their swirl represents the swirling intestines seen in translucent tadpoles. Crawdon's chest also possesses a hidden design. Design. Under C, Crawdon's star and teeth-like patterns make it look like a Sharpedo, scaring away any predators. This Batesian mimicry is used by all sorts of animals to make them more dangerous than they actually are. Masquerain is a prime example of this phenomenon, considering its wings were designed to look like eyes. It's kinda creepy from a distance. Domize's design can also seem scarier when under C. I mean, it's pretty scary regardless, but when you look at it from a different perspective, you may notice how its seaweed wraps around the anchor in a way that resembles sharp grinning teeth. I understand why it's called the Sea Creeper now. But in my opinion, a creepier Pokemon would be Parasect, who is basically a zombie. The mushroom on its back is the Captainau, so its hollow eyes are indicators of its lost soul. May Arceus bless him in the afterlife. 
Now, Arceus' fence waste is often ridiculed, but it's actually speculated that since Arceus is an amalgamation of a bunch of different creation gods, that its golden arches represent the Dharma Chakra, an iconic symbol in various Indian religions. The design of Arceus' rings makes a cameo in Type Null's collar. This is a nice easter egg considering this Pokemon was made to mimic Arceus' ability, even mastering the Arceus system as its ability upon evolution. Now while Arceus may be the king of all Pokemon, Tyrantrum is the one with the crown. Its headplate and mane resemble royal headgear and collars. The whole point of this Pokemon is that it tyrannically ruled during its prime. The actual royal Pokemon, Pyroar, has a design on its mane that both represents a Daimanji, which are large bonfires lit during the Gozan no Kuribi festivals in Japan, as well as a close similarity to the kanji for fire. But we're gonna keep the regal Pokemon coming. Superior is based on French royalty, what with its whitened face and fleur-de-lis symbol on its collar. Another starter Pokemon based on French aristocracy is Empoleon, who is basically a penguin version of Napoleon. What I personally like about it is how it perfectly blends the concept of an emperor penguin with the design of an actual French emperor. But some may not notice how its penguin color scheme also mimics the fashion sense of French noblemen. I love it when Pokemon's designs look like clothing without simply looking like the Pokemon is wearing clothing, unlike Jinx and Fro. But yet another Pokemon whose design sneakily mimics that of human fashion is Gumshoes. And no, I'm not talking about its resemblance to Donald Trump. This Pokemon is actually a detective, so its fur is shaped like a trench coat, and its hair is an allusion to detective hats. Behem is also wearing a trench coat, and its head resembles both a UFO and hat. This makes him look like a secret government agent that would apprehend such an alien Pokemon. Meloetta is wearing a microphone headset, but the obscure aspect is the shape, which resembles the bottom half of a treble clef, while its hair resembles the bars in sheet music. Its arms are in the shape of quarter notes, and its pupils are shaped like whole notes. Another Pokemon with special eyes is Luxray. Now since Luxray has X-ray vision, which Lynxes were fabled to possess, some X-ray motifs have been implemented in its design. The back of its front legs have shorter fur with a bone-like pattern, almost as if its legs have been through an X-ray. Another blue and yellow electric type Pokemon has a cool design element as well. Manectric Snout resembles a crocodile clip. And now here's a clip of a crocodile, who looks like it's wearing a pair of shady shades. Now while Salandid is obviously based on a salamander bandit, I wouldn't blame you for not noticing that its face skin coloration makes it look like it's wearing a mask, cause it's so well integrated into its design. Another fiery boy, Macargo, has an obvious design trait that many people miss. The shell on its back isn't just some random rocks, it's the hardened magma from its skin. That's a cleverly designed creature. There are a lot of Pokemon who have seemingly arbitrary design choices, but you may be surprised to find out that a couple of these traits serve a purpose. Tauros's multiple tails constantly whip it in order to rile the Pokemon up and heighten its will to fight. This kinda mimics actual whipping of bulls, or even be a pun on the bull whip. Delcati's neck pillow is not just for decoration, it's literally a neck pillow. This Pokemon loves to roam around and just sleep anywhere, so it's always ready to nap. Now how about this mouse? I hope you've noticed that Dedene's whiskers resemble an antenna, and that its tail resembles a chewed wire, cause mice can chew on wires. I included this fact just in case. Now we know owls wake up early in the night to go and hunt some mice, but Hoot Hoot doesn't need to set its clock, cause the clock is on its face. Literally, these are hands of a clock, and it also has an organ that allows it to precisely tell the time. So even if the prankster that is Whimsicott hid your alarm clock, you'd still wake up for that important appointment you have in the morning if you have a hoot hoot around. You know what appointment I'm talking about. The doctor's appointment to check the rash you have on your, uh, you know, your thumb. But Whimsicott doesn't have any thumbs. What a terrible segue. Now although it isn't literally a ram, this Pokemon has multiple sheep elements. Since sheep wool is often compared to cotton, these green loopies make it even more sheep-like. A lot of people think that calling this Pokemon a ram would be a bit of a stretch, but the official Unova horoscope found in the games depicts Whimsicott as the zodiac for the month of May, which corresponds to Ares, the ram. Although this in-game horoscope isn't definitive proof, since Braviary corresponds with Leo and Sazbuck corresponds with Capricorn, which is a goat mermaid. Sazbuck ain't no goat mermaid. Now the nature of this undersea Pokemon's design is under speculation. Clampearl has a design that could be incredibly smart if confirmed. This thing isn't a pearl, it's a fish egg that looks like a pearl. I mean, fish eggs already do look like delicious pearls. This would make sense since it evolves into fish. And I would slap my face silly if I didn't mention how Huntail's tail looks like a Gorbis, and the tail of Gorbis kinda looks like Huntail. If it, you know, 
shut its damn mouth. But don't shut your mouth. I want to hear what you have to say. Make sure to leave a like so I know that you enjoyed this video. And subscribe if you want to see more. Keep in mind that it's very important for you to follow me on Facebook and Twitter. And check the description for all the music I use, a link to my Patreon where you can get rewards for helping me out, and the t-shirts I made. I'll see you guys very soon.